Howdy folks, welcome back to another tutorial on building the account API in Go. Last time I said that we'd work on a tokens handler, and while I did end up scaffolding out the code to make those updates, I realized while doing so that it would be better if we updated our token pair model. So let's make some small updates today, and hopefully I'll have the rest of the tutorial out in less than the normal week's time. Let's look at a diagram for why I want to update this token pair. Our goal is to create a token handler which receives the user's stringified refresh token. We can then create a token service method called validate refresh token, which we will do next time, that can receive this token string. Now remember, when we call the token handler, we do not have a valid ID token, so we cannot authorize the user by that means via the middleware that we previously created. Anyway, this token string will be validated using our JWT libraries, and then the question is what to return. Right now, we could possibly return something like a token pair, except that we don't have the ID token, and even if we just returned a stringified refresh token, we'd then need to decode that token again in the handler layer and add unnecessary logic in my opinion. So what we'll do instead is take this token pair and we'll add the ID token and refresh token fields as their own structs, which you can see here. The ID token field struct will just have a sign string, which basically boils down to a string. I just did it this way just in case for some reason we have to add fields later. And the refresh token will have a sign string as well as the ID referring to the token's ID. When you create a JSON web token, you can add this JTI field that holds the ID. So we'll return that as well as a UUID and a user ID also as a UUID. So when the user calls the token service, validate refresh token, they'll get back this refresh token struct. With the UID from the refresh token, we can then get the updated user by calling our already existing user service get method. And then we get a fresh user, which we can use with the ID of this refresh token. Remember, we have this here. We can take that ID and call the new pair from user token service method. And then this will reach out to our token service repository and delete the previous token with this ID, and then return a new refresh token and ID token in the form of a token pair. Next time, we're going to end up making some updates so that when we call this delete refresh token method, if there is not a token to be deleted, then we'll return an authorization error. And that way, we can kind of handle this token handler in a way such that if the user sends an invalid refresh token, or let's say the refresh token is valid. It's validated in the token service here, meaning that the JWT is valid. But then let's say on another web browser, the user signs out. We haven't added that functionality yet, but what that would do would be to remove their token from the whitelist in Redis. And so if the user then tries to create a new pair from user with the previous refresh tokens ID, It'll try to find that in Redis and it's not there. There's no tokens. So we know that there's an authorization error that this refresh token with this ID is no longer valid as it is not in the token repository. And then we'll also need to update the new pair from user to handle this. We'll do this all next time. Today, we'll just quickly update this. I'm back inside of our project. And the first thing that I want to do is actually to update our token utility functions here in service tokens.go. We have these types here that are used with our generate ID token and generate refresh token functions and also the validation functions. We have these types for the claims. These types should not be exportable. And what I accidentally did in the first version of this is to return a type, not this ID token customs claims, but this refresh token to the handler. But this is not a model. And we only want to pass models in this model folder between our application layers. So to avoid any possibility of that, I'm going to make these lowercase, meaning that they're not exportable from the package. 
as is normal in Golang. So let's change that. We're also going to call this refresh token data, just to clarify that it's a different struct from the model layer, which will have a refresh token. So let's call this refresh token data. And furthermore, I want to make this ID a UUID here. So we'll import the UUID library if necessary. And then we also, instead of, we'll still return the expires in as a time dot duration. This again is used for the local refresh token data. We'll handle the user ID in the actual model layer refresh token. Let's scroll down and also make the refresh token claims or custom claims, uh, lowercase. Very good, and we should start to get a whole bunch of errors. Our generate refresh token now will return refresh token data. Good, and this will be a refresh token custom claims. What else do we have wrong? A whole bunch. This will be refresh token data. And remember that now our refresh token data, I think it needs to have just the UUID and not the string. So this token ID is already a UUID and I was making it a string. So let's get rid of this. Very well, what else do we have? Some more ID token custom claims. I'm sure you guys are just loving all this work, but sometimes this is, this is how programming works, right? Not to lecture you. I'm sure you all have as much or more experience than I do. And I think that's all in this file. Let's see where else we have issues. Uh-huh, there's still one more in this file, in tokens. Let's call this ID token custom claims. And we have a problem in one of our, actually in our token service file here. Where is this issue? It's here, uh-huh. So it says we can't use set refresh token this method actually takes a string for the token ID, and that's here, so we just need to use UUID string method, and I think all should work with that. Great, now we're getting some more warnings in our test token service. We need to change this as well in line 99 here to lowercase id token custom claims. And I don't know why these uh, come up only after I make some changes. I'd have to see how the code's looking there, but okay, it looks like all the errors are fixed. Let's go ahead and run a test of the service layer just to make sure everything's working. We're in the account folder already, if you notice. So let's run go test, and then let's run just the service layer here. Okay, that stuff seems to be working without breaking, and of course, we'll run this together in Postman later. Now we can actually go back to our model folder here and go to the token pair. And the first thing I want to do is rename this to tokens. As we're no longer just dealing with the token pair, we're also going to have an ID and refresh token in here. And then let's close the other tokens file. We have some files of the same names in different folders, and let's just close those to avoid confusion. And let's update our token pair definition as follows. Here will be the definition of our refresh token. It will have an ID referring to the token ID, the user's ID, and the signed string. Notice that we're going to actually use the JSON key of refresh token if we send the refresh token to a user in our gin handler. This will make it easier so that we don't have to update our current, for example, sign-in code. So if we go to our handler layer, sign-in, this tokens is now going to return, it's still going to return token pair, but remember that now our token pair is going to have the ID token here and the refresh token, which you see here. But we're not going to need to change the code because our signed string is already going to serialize into what tokens had before, meaning that it's going to return the signed string on the key refresh token. So what our user sees when they make a request with Postman should be the same. For now, our ID token is just going to return the signed string on the key of ID token. We may add some more fields later, but I don't think so. Now we're going to basically just squash a whole bunch of errors. So let's go see our problems here. Let's start in the token service. All right, I got a lot of things highlighted here. All right, first, we need to return a model.id token now here. 
And remember, this takes a sign string property. And this ID token was previously a string. And this is computed or computed locally when we generate the ID token. And this is a string, just so you can recall. And that's all the model ID token takes. Next, let's create a model refresh token here. And this will have a sign string as well. And let's close the braces. This will also have an ID, which should be on the refresh token as well. Now this refresh token is not a string. This refresh token here is called when we use generate refresh token and it returns the refresh token data that we saw earlier and that had an ID of UUID type on it or that we updated to be a UUID recently in this video. All right, scrolling back down, here is our model token pair with the refresh token. It's got the ID property. We are missing one final property, which is the user ID. And this function receives the user if we went up top. So we can just return the user's UID here, maybe add a comma, and that should be good to go, I hope. We get some more errors in our tests. Let's go to the sign in test go, and we're returning the ID token here, and we need to do the exact same thing. Sign string, and that should be fixed, and we get an error here now, I'm sure. And this refresh token, we can update these tests, and maybe I will in a little bit, but this should just be able to take the sign string and work as is. We don't need all the properties. Our tests aren't including them. It would be better to probably do that, though. We have a few more errors here. This is in the sign up test. All right, almost the exact same thing here as the other tests. So let's just wrap this in a model.id token. And I don't remember, I haven't been including all of the tests in these tutorials. So I don't remember if I included all of these code, this code. So sorry if this looks new to you, but this is all in the GitHub repository, which I always reference. And then in the token service, we have an issue here. All right, this is the JSON web token parse with claims here, and it's taking the, the token pair ID token. This ID token is no longer just a string, and this function takes in the sign string to parse the JWT. And I'm just using this in some of the tests, so we'll need to extract the sign string. And then I think there's one more of these here with the sign string. I don't know why these ones are producing errors and the others were producing warnings. That would be interesting to figure out. All the tests seem to be updated. Let's go ahead and try to run this with go test and let's run it for all of our packages by using dot slash dot dot dot. And something is failed. The error is in the token service line 95 or the token service test, which we have open. Ah, so here we're doing a type assertion to assert that our token pairs ID token was of type string. And so we need to, of course, make sure that this is a sign string or the actual sign string on the ID token. And let's see if there's anything obvious here on line 135. There's another error. And similar thing, it needs to check that it is a string. And hopefully that will fix everything. All right, our tests are passing. Let's now CD up one directory to the project root. Let's run our Docker Compose up and try this out in Postman. It looks like our application handlers are working and all the database loaded and stuff. Here I am in Postman. Let's try signing in with a user that exists. I think I already have a guy01. If not, we'll sign them up. Good, there's an ID and refresh token. Let's try signing up. Let's try guy02. Looks like that already exists. And I'm having some problems with the Postman script, but let's go ahead and see 
what that is later. Maybe that's because I had an error and it was trying to extract a field that's not in the JSON. Very good. Now let's go and try to sign in user three or guy zero three. So as far as I can tell, it's working. If there are any bugs, I'll try to work them out between now and the next tutorial. Thanks for joining me again. Next time, as I have said, we're going to update this new pair from user to return an error. If using the re previous refresh token, if that refresh token was not able to be deleted in the token repository, then we'll also add this validate refresh token logic. It will look a lot like the validate ID token logic. It's just using the JWT library again. And then we'll link all this up in the token handler. And just as a final note, I've decided to end the written tutorial as it was just too much extra work for too little reward. I did have some readers, but to write all that out is pretty tedious. And furthermore, to follow along with all the file changes in a project this big, I, I think it's just too much. I may use dev.2 or create my own blog to add interesting posts on smaller topics. But for this video, video tutorial, I've decided to go strictly with YouTube. And that's in the hopes that if my job interviewing process picks up, I can still keep these videos coming out on a weekly basis. And if not, uh, I can do them even more frequently. But thanks for all my subscribers. And if you've liked these, I hope you will continue to watch them. Hasta el próximo video. Que se cuiden.